Hi everybody, my name is Connie Norlene and I'm going to be 80 years old in May. I birthed two children and I had two miscarriages. And I am a victim of pelvic organ prolapse. I'm creating these videos to bring awareness to all of us. And I want to preempt this by saying I am not in any way qualified for any medical advice, medical information, um, medical healing or curing. What I am qualified <laughs> is from my personal experience. Um, and I'm gonna share my story with you in a minute. So my personal experience um, on this subject, having um, an ongoing experience with going through it. And my purpose for this video is to bring awareness so that we can be better equipped with how to uh, make decisions and to take care of our bodies and do what we feel is best. Um, and know that there's other options out there. So I believe that we are going to be women helping women. That's what it's all about. We have to help ourselves and we have to help each other. The medical world um, chooses to put a Band-Aid on our challenge and in one way or another, and it keeps getting worse. Except for the very few that do get results, and I'm happy for them. Um, in these videos, I'm going to be talking about solutions and problems and sharing resources. And I am open to all of the um, ideas, resources, information that you might have as well. And you can share that um, at the bottom of this video in comments. Or you can um, find me on Facebook and friend request me and then send me a private message telling me that you friend requested me because sometimes the friend requests get lost and um, we can discuss anything you want to in Facebook private message as well. So, um, my story on my journey is that, let's see, I had a hysterectomy when I was 50 and it was challenging. And let me go back just a little bit in the story because I think it's gonna be important um, in the long run for those of you that might have had similar experiences. Um, when I was, I don't know, maybe 35, and I was having, um, still having periods, and I remember being in my kitchen and my mother was in the kitchen fixing something and I had to, and we were both in there cooking, and I had to stop and go sit down. And I said to her, I feel like my insides are just falling out, and I don't know why. And so I would sit down for a while, and the feeling would pass. Well, now I know what that was the beginning of because of the study and the research that I've done. And so if any of you have had that feeling back in the beginning, uh, now you know why, you know what was coming. And I think it's important for us to know this, to share with others and to share with younger generations. So we're going to be women helping women because we need to really detail our journeys and what we experienced and when we experienced things um, so that we can help others avoid the challenges that some of us are in today. So um, I had that experience with my periods and feeling like my insides were falling out. Then when I was 50, um, 
I had to have a hysterectomy. It was mandatory because I was losing way too much blood. And so I had the hysterectomy. Um, I was in the process of learning about the different types of hormones, but in the meantime, I listened to the doctor and I went on the hormone therapy from the artificial hormones and progesterones. And I took that for about five years. And at first I thought, wow, this is the greatest thing since popcorn. And then I started having all kinds of problems. And so I started doing more research and I got off of that and got on a more natural um, estrogen and progesterone from a compounding pharmacy. And I'm sure many of you are aware of that. Um, so moving forward from that, about the age of 60, I went into the doctor and I said, I feel like something is falling out. And, and I, I didn't take a mirror and look or anything, but um, so I went, to a, I went to my regular doctor and he sent me to um, the gynecologist that specialized in vaginal prolapse. I didn't know that at the time. And so when I went in, he examined me and he said, yes, you have the beginnings of the um, vaginal prolapse or the pelvic organ prolapse, um, but you're not a candidate yet to do anything about it. And, you know, we're having some controversies right now over the mesh that we have been using. And um, they're in the process of stopping that whole mesh program. And so you're not needing anything right now. You're fine. So I went home thinking I was fine. Instead of him giving me some tips and ideas to do to maybe prevent it from getting any worse or prolonging it or whatever. But no, he just sent me home and said, you're fine. Has anybody experienced that early on? So um, fast forward and I'm 70-ish and I'm walking and I'm talking to a friend of mine who's a few years older than me. And I told her that what I felt was happening and um, that it had been getting worse. And I said, have you ever heard of that? And she said, yes, I have heard of many people um, having this problem. And I said, well, what did they do about it? And she said, I don't know, it wasn't discussed. Um, but she said, I knew of a few that, ha I, did I say many? I don't know, she said, I heard of, of a few that had that problem. And so um, fast forward then to about three years ago, which would be 77, and I talked to my daughters and I said, you know, this is getting worse and it's really getting uncomfortable. And I think I need to go have it checked out and I may need to do something about it, but I'm scared, I'm apprehensive. So because of my apprehension, um, I didn't do anything for another year, year and a half. And then um, at 78, I went to a gynecologist who sent me to a urologist that specialized in um, this pelvic org organ prolapse surgery. And so I went to him and he said, my options were that I could have him fit me for this pesciary, which I never heard the word of before. And uh, I could come back every three or four months and he could take it out and clean it out and put it back in to help prevent, prevent, prevent infection. Mm. That sounded like a lot of fun. I said, I don't think I like that idea. What else have you got? And he said, your other option is surgery. And I know they have numbers, one, two, three, and four on the how much it's prolapsed. I never got that number. He just said my other option was surgery. And so we talked about it. And so I said, okay. And I had the surgery and he wanted to put a mesh in for my, to hold my bladder in place, but not for the, the, uterus. And I said, uh, well, I don't know, I'll think about it. So I really labored over that until the time of surgery. And when it came to the day of surgery, I went in and I saw him before surgery. And I said, I want it known. I want it on the record that I am not having mesh anything to hold anything up. I don't want it. 
So I didn't have the mesh, anything. And oh my gosh, the pain was literally unbearable, worse than childbirth to me. And they had, um, maybe because it lasted longer. Um, and so they sent me home with Tylenol. Take every six hours. That pain was so much more than Tylenol. So I went six weeks, um, checkups, the whole thing. And um, the first time I went back was all I could do to get to the doctor's office. He was downstairs. We did take the elevator, but still. Um, so I got in there, <clears throat> had the exam. They said I was doing fine. And so then <clears throat> at six weeks, I think eight weeks, I think it was eight weeks, one of those, I went back in and um, I had felt like that it was starting to fall. And so I went in and they said, um, no, it's fine. And there was a couple of stitches left that had not healed and he snipped them. It's only my guess, but I think he snipped one that was really stubborn for dissolving and he snipped it too close. That's my opinion. Because within two weeks after that, I totally fell right back to where I was before that whole surgery and all the pain and everything. And so I went in and he said, yep, it's, um, it's collapsed. So you're back where you were. And he said, I don't recommend surgery right away because um, to do it again. And he said, the chances of it holding are very slim because we've already done it and it didn't hold that time. So the chances of it holding are very slim. So he said, you can have the patiary and we can do like we talked about before. Um, <clears throat> or um, we can sew up your vagina. How does that sound to you? It didn't sound very good to me. So I said, no, I'm going to go home and think about it. And so I've been living with it ever since. Um, I did hear that um, physical therapy, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, just physical therapy in that situation would help. So I had no idea what that entailed, none whatsoever. So I had them um, set an appointment for that. I went in for the first appointment. She asked me some questions. Um, she put her hand in my vagina, which is you know, typical exam. And then she had me do some exercises and she kept her hand in my vagina for, I don't know, it felt like forever. I would say at least 10 minutes directing me through different exercises and stuff. And I guess that's normal, but it was so invasive to me. Oh my gosh, it was so invasive. And um, then she sent me home with a bunch of exercises and she canceled the next appointment and then for health reasons, she probably had COVID. And then I never went back. I did not want to go back and experience that again, ever. Um, so that was that. And here I am today and I'm going to be 80 in May. And um, I've discovered a few things that have helped me to feel better. Um, but before I get into those, I would like to do um, a couple of more videos just talking about, um, I don't know where you guys are and how much you've studied it. And so I just wanted to talk about some of the, um, the subject of it and get a little more graphic. And so, um, yeah, I'm just looking at my notes and that was the very last note I had, discuss uh, the prolapse in detail. So that's what I would like to do for our next video. And if you know anyone that has um, 
suffered with this challenge, is suffering with this challenge, uh, might be uh, experiencing it, please recommend them to this video and let's discuss this. And I welcome your comments. Share your stories below or find me on Facebook and share your story there if you would rather share it privately. I want us to be women helping women. And we have been silent about this way too long. And this is going to go over a little more because I just thought of something else I wanted to share. It's very short. But um, they say at least 50% of the women have, suffer from this in one degree or another. And of those 50%, at least 50% of those opt for surgery. And the percentage of the surgeries that hold are so slim. And even if they do hold, it collapses in somewhere between six and 10 years for most people. And you have to have the surgery done all over again. And that's a whole subject that I probably want to get into on another time. And so I'm going to save the rest of that and we'll talk about that. Um, remind me if I forget to talk about the um, that whole subject of the surgeries and, and the successes and the different things. Um, I'm probably going to talk about it anyway because I'm going to be talking about the Band-Aid approach that they do for us. Oh my gosh, this is such a passion of mine and such a soapbox. Please stay tuned. Come back. Share your stories here. Ask any questions. Find me on Facebook and share your stories there privately. Um, I want us to have answers for each other and I want us to support each other and I want us to have find success. So come back and I'll be back in a few days with another video and um, we'll just talk more about this. All right, it's really a soapbox for me. Um, thanks for watching. Um, if you like this and you wanna come back and keep talking about this, please make sure you subscribe and give me a thumbs up and we'll keep going on this. All right, we're going to find solutions because we are women helping women. All right, have a good day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.